Let the government show first and foremost how the trust is being built. What they have on the table right now is absolutely untrustworthy exercise in opaqueness. Let them reverse that, come back to us and say, we're setting an example. Okay, you're saying NAMA is not going to work. Well, that's a different story entirely. I'm okay, NAMA, but in terms I'm of saying, the structure I'm saying and NAMA, transparency. What I said right now is okay. NAMA is business-wise unethical entity okay. as it is structured right now. Whether it's going to work or not, I think it's not only going not to work, it's also actually going to saddle the economy into a very long-term period of low economic growth, if not stagnation, if not a long-term recession. But that's a different issue. Okay. Deirdre, I know you wanted to come back first, and then, Dan, I'll bring you in. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with a lot of what Constantine has said. I, I think there has been very much a breakdown in trust, um, certainly in the investment community, but I think that's an international breakdown in trust, first and foremost. So this is a global issue, not just an Irish issue, and I think it's important that we look to see how, the, you know, where is the appropriate place for the remedy and there is, without a doubt in the corporate governance debate, a more appropriate place for the remedy at a global level and if not at a global level, at a European level and it's only really then that I think Ireland can look and say what specifically do we have to do, bearing in mind our legacy um, uh, in order to, to deal with that um, breakdown in trust. I think with that there there is it's good to see that th there at least has been the start of a broader debate because one of the things that has frustrated me in my 14 years in the exchange is any time anybody starts talking about corporate governance, they start talking about listed companies. Um, and really governance is about embedding culture and culture can only happen on a systemic basis. And if you look at um, everything that has happened um, in the last 18 months to two years, there are systemic issues, um, uh, you know, and quite a lot of the breakdowns have, have been probably more fundamentally in the public sector, um, or at least as, as fundamental in the public sector as in the private sector. So therefore, I'd like to see a broadening of that debate. I'd like to actually see a debate, and and a considered debate rather than this sort of instinctive kind of, you know, let's get straight to the solution before we actually work through what actually happened. Okay. Um, do you, do you once, think NAMA, believe, yeah, do you think NAMA is, is a, a good idea or do you think it is fundamentally flawed and the government needs to go back to the drawing board? My personal view of NAMA is, is, is neither here nor there. I would say one thing about NAMA, um, the markets understand it, they understand how it's going to work. Um, it has been communicated well. Um, they have therefore assimilated what Ireland stands for in the context of how, how, we, uh, how we see ourselves coming out of this problem. And really, I suppose it would only be, uh, it would only be appropriate for me to say that, uh, that I think that bringing in a new solution um, at this stage, it would have to be far more clearly articulated than anything that I have seen to date. Okay. Dan Boyle, I mean, the Greens have expressed uh, some concern about elements of NAMA. What, what are your own views? Do you think that this is going to work with a few amendments and changes and a little bit of, you know, talk with the general public? Or, or, or do you think that the, the, the gist and the majority of what's in NAMA will go ahead as a piece of legislation? Uh, I think the draft bill, my own opinion the draft bill, and I've articulated, uh, I wouldn't vote for the draft bill. Uh, and uh, I know the official bill, when it comes out in a couple of days' time, will be uh, significantly changed. Uh, but that in itself won't be enough, uh, and the bill will go through uh, a metamorphosis again through the committee stage. There are several elements in which it's flawed. There's the question of risk sharing, there's the question of transparency, uh, corporate government issues, the whole issue of public confidence. Uh, but in, in terms of the cost to the taxpayer, I haven't been convinced. Uh, someone within the, the parameters of government or, or someone who's a member of the parliament, that any of the other alternatives would cost the taxpayer any less. Uh, and uh, I, I think that debate hasn't happened. What we've had is, is a kind of reactive uh, debate in relation to one particular proposal uh, and a strong reaction against who is making the proposal and who the proposal is seen to benefit. Uh, and I don't think that's a very honest approach to these issues. Uh, th th there are a number of options in front of us. Uh, th th there's the possibility uh, of uh, a nationalized bank system. There's the question of whether we could 
directly default and, and take the consequences of that. Uh, there's a mix and gather of several, several other options. Uh, but the government has a role to govern. It's come up with a proposal. It's flawed in many respects. I think the Minister for Finance and the government have taken the right approach in putting out a draft document, extremely flawed <coughs> as it is. But can I, can I address the, the wider issues about uh, public confidence in business and, and even the links between business? Um, I think it's accepted now that the Celtic Tiger was a fairly bloated animal and its, its coat didn't have as much of a sheen as, as we've been led to believe. But the structure of the Irish economy uh, it itself what was a bit of a shimmer. Uh, the, the fact that, uh, strangely enough, even after the, the, the biggest economic collapse we've ever experienced in our history, uh, we have a well-performing export sector. <laughs> uh, those exports usually are, are, are in the main for foreign direct investment. 80 years into our history, we still don't have an indigenous export manufacturing base. And that's something that, as a country, that isn't very acceptable. Uh, we, we've imported a lot of our wealth by giving incentives to a financial services industry. But the biggest factor was that we allowed property in construction to accelerate to 14 and 15 percent of our gross domestic product. Uh, and that's the lie that people bought. Uh, we didn't have a balanced economy, and we believed while it was existing for 10 years, it could go on forever. Uh, and part of that reason is that the, the, the ability of individual people in business and sectoral uh, uh, interest in business to influence the political process through corporate donations has had that effect. And until we address that, the, the, the dealing with this particular crisis mm -hmm. doesn't deal with the stopping of this type of occurrence again. Okay, I know, I know some of you want to come back, but I'm very conscious that there are people in the audience as well. You, you've had your hand up, and lady in the back as well. Okay, very good questions, thank you very much.